Hello, yes, today I am going to take you through an operation in which I am going to do a close reduction and KVR fixation of dislocation or subluxation of carpal metacarpal joint. Now, this is an extremely uh, common injury uh, which you can see in patients involved in road trafficking accidents or sometimes involved in a fight. And if somebody presents to you with a swollen hand, uh, then you must suspect uh, that this patient may have got subluxation or dislocation, especially if there is no obvious fractures on x-ray. So today I am going to take you through in a step-by-step -step fashion as how to reduce it and how to secure a fixation to get a great result. So this is our gentleman, he is right hand dominant and unfortunately fell from his bike and presented to casualty uh, with pain and swelling over the right hand and uh, in this x-ray you can see profound soft tissue swelling. And here also you can see a lot of swelling, the shadow shows that there is something not right. But if you look at the AP, it looks pretty good and even to an experienced clinician it may look normal, it is very difficult to say. Now the second common view that you get here is the oblique view. In oblique view, if you look closely here, 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 it may suggest that something is not right. However, uh, if you are starting your career, if you do not have that uh, years of experience, uh, again this can go unnoticed even in developed countries. So if you have any doubt, if a clinical presentation does not match the radiological presentation, then think something is not right. And in patients who have got hand pain and who have got profound swelling, who does not show in actual shows any obvious fracture, think of uh, carpal metacarpal dislocation. Then we got this. Uh, x-ray done and if you look at this x-ray uh, you can clearly see that these metacarpals are flexed, uh, there is a piece of uh, carpal bone which has uh, also evolved. So true lateral view uh, gave us our clinical suspicion of uh, carpal metacarpal dislocation and this is a fracture dislocation. So this patient uh, requires reduction and KY fixation and that is what we are going to do today. So this is our theatre setup, patient is supine on a hand table, um, most of the times it will come close, you really have to open it. I have applied tonique but I am not inflating it, I will inflate it just in case on a rare occasion you need to open it up, uh, it just makes your life slightly easier. I have angled the table and I have shown this in multiple videos, if you have got a small operating theatre, our theatre is pretty big. However, when you angle the table, it just gives more working space. So our trolley will be on our same side, that is on my right hand side. The C arm is going to come straight in and out so that you can get a good images. The C arm screen is right in the front so that we have got unimpeded access of the images. So the next thing will be, I will show you uh, his hand. So look at his hand, his hand is quite swollen and radiologically on an AP, on an oblique view, you are not to see any fractures and if you suspect, if you see this swelling, such profound swelling without any fracture as I said before, you must think something is not right. And if I show you from the side profile, again you can see it is quite swollen and when you see this, be mindful that you need a true lateral view to identify a um, carpo metacarpal joint uh, dislocation or subluxation. If you see this x-ray, you can see the metacarpal usually go in this direction except the thumb. Now these two have jumped out and you can see a small area that is gone. And this you will identify only in a true lateral view, in an oblique view, it is so easy to miss. So true view or right view is extremely important in these cases. Now if you want to do a good fixation, then you need to reduce it first. And reduction, usually attraction is more than sufficient to uh, reduce it. So Arpan is applying the counter traction and I am applying the traction and you can use your thumb to manipulate. So just give long longitudinal traction and as I said wait it, in most of my videos I will say wait for around 3 to 5 minutes and hopefully this traction usually is more than enough in reducing these fractures. So just I am just going to carry on like this for another couple of minutes and then I will join you back. So now we have been applying traction for 
a few minutes now, two, three minutes now. And if uh, Prashant can show the X-ray on the screen, uh, you will see that it is nicely reduced. So, but as soon as I am letting the traction off, it's usually it's subluxing again, suggesting it's quite unstable. So let me just see if it stays in place when I am letting the traction off. So the image on the right is when we have traction on, image on the left is when we let the traction off. So it's not how, it's not all the time that you will find it so unstable. Most times it sits down and all it needs is a K wire. But there are occasions where it will be unstable. Like you can see this, the dorsal support is gone. So normally the metacarpal should be in a straight line. Now here you can see this is straight line, but these two metacarpals are jumping on the back. So this should be here and this should be here. So all I'm going to do is, I'm going to use two of my assistant to keep the traction on and I will fire the wire uh, in order to keep it secured. So before I pass the wire, um, I will pass the wire in lateral position, but I am identifying my um, you know, central line of the metacarpal and I want to be roughly few centimeters above the carpal metacarpal joint. So I have put the K wire here. Basharat, can you just put a mark at the tip? So this, he has just put the mark on the tip. So this is my entry point and I will show you how it looks on a CM. So I want my wire to be roughly in the center and I want it to be slightly proximal because that is from where I am going to pass my um, K wires. So I am going to do the same thing for this, this and these metacarpals which are subluxed. Um, I think these two are definitely subluxed. This I am not sure that but I am going to start fixation with these um, ulnar ones too, ulnar ones first. So I am going to just repeat the same step for the fifth metacarpal. Same way, this is my point of entry and this is the direction of the metacarpal and I will show you um, the pictures on the CM. So again, I am roughly in the center of the metacarpal, uh, centimeter, centimeter and a half proximal to the carpal metacarpal joint and I am going to do the same thing for the middle metacarpal as well. So now this is our drawing done and I think this is uh, the most uh, the you know, hardest part of the operation. Once you have done this and you have once you have identified your point of entry, uh, it becomes quite easy. You will apply traction and counter traction, ensure on II that this is reduced and then pass the K wire and that should be the end of the operation. So the first wire that I am going to pass is the little wire like you know in Liz Frank. You mostly if you stabilize this, usually the other becomes stable. Now the key is here you have got a lot of tendons. So make a stab incision, take an artery forcep, do a gentle dissection and then only attempt to pass the wire. So don't just pass it blindly. I don't think that is a good practice because you can wrap up the tendon, you can wrap up any nerves and that can not, that will not be good. So now I am right onto the bone. So I am just going to take a wire. Now my entry point is ready. I will get my assistant to put traction and counter traction and then I will fire the wire. So while passing the wire, you just have to remember your lines that you have drawn and then your wire should be pretty much in the same direction and also take a lateral to ensure that you are not too distal or too proximal. So let me show you how it looks on our lateral. So if you see our entry of the wire, it is roughly a centimeter, centimeter half proximal to carpal metacarpal joint which I think is uh, perfect. So I am happy with my direction. Now I am going to pass my wire. So I am just passing the wire and it is in the bone and you will get a bite, you will get a feel that it is in the bone. So I am just going to check in the CRM. So we have far passed our first wire and now you can see uh, the joint looks pretty reduced. So in the same, applying the same principle, I am going to pass my second uh, K wire for the ring metacarpal. So again, I have put a stab hole, I have uh, taken an artery clip and separated everything. And now I am check, after checking my wire position in lateral, I am passing it and then I will see it in my CM.
So after passing the second wire following the same principles, now the reduction is absolutely anatomical and even after leaving um, the traction off, now this the view that you are seeing on your left is um, we have not applied any traction now and everything looks pretty good. So this is our second wire done and let me reassess the middle metacarpal to see if I need to pass another wire. Now the middle metacarpal was also unstable, so I am just holding the middle finger, giving it, giving it a traction and using the other wires as a guide, I am passing my third wire and I can, I am feeling that this is still in the bone, you feel that it is still in the bone, still in the bone and that looks pretty good. So I am just going to check it on the C arm. So this is how it looks on AP, um, now if you have dealt with Lisfranc, you know, the wire that goes to the fifth metacarpal also goes obliquely because if you go straight there is hardly anything. So this has to go oblique, now this could be slightly, now this is going in the correct direction in order to catch uh, this carpal bone and this is going pretty much straight into the capitate and this is quite stable and if you see the lateral, now everything is anatomically reduced. Can you see this? Previously it was like that, now everything is anatomically reduced. The key is your starting point should be few centimeters before, otherwise you will keep skidding or even if you get into the right position, the wire will not get a good hold. I am quite happy with this fixation, now I am just going to cut it, bend it and put him into plaster for around 6 weeks. So again just to reinforce, if you see this, this is going at a slight angle, you have drawn this line straight but it goes at an angle of roughly 15 to 20 degrees from the direction of the metacarpal. This you can fire pretty much straight away. So you can see these two are going at different angle and this is going slightly obliquely in order to catch the carpal bones. So this is um, your operation done, we will just bend it and cut the wires and the wires will come out at 6 weeks time. So this is our final image and it looks beautiful. You can see this small space here, small space here, small space here. This means this is anatomically reduced. And in an AP view, if you do not this, see this space, in an experienced clinician can make a diagnosis of carpometacarpal uh, dislocation. However, if you have any doubt or if you are in the beginning of your career, do not forget to take the true lateral view. So this gentleman will go in a back slab for roughly around 2 weeks and then we will put him in a cast for further 4 weeks. So viewers, this was a demonstration on how to do a K wire fixation of a dislocated or subluxed carpometacarpal joint. Now this is an extremely uh, rewarding operation, pretty straightforward. However, there are still small nitty gritties which you have to be mindful of. And I have tried to demonstrate every single thing in this video. Uh, the, this may sound pretty straightforward. However, you have to ensure that you have reduced uh, the joint anatomically before you pass the K wire. So if you follow the principles, I am sure you will struggle less and your operation will go more, more smoothly. If you are visiting my channel for the first time, I would advise you to kindly subscribe to our channel as you will find many uh, useful, important clinical as well as operative videos uh, on our channel. Please do not forget to give us a thumbs up because this gives us energy to keep making more videos for you. Kindly subscribe and also share our channel. Thank you.